Yeah. Great to see you. I'm so happy to be here. This is Trish. Trish has been a subscriber from the channel for a while and she is frustrated with her thin, fine hair. She wants a new look and today I'm gonna give her just that. Hopefully we don't cut it too short and hopefully she doesn't hate it. I want to say a big thank you to SRI for sponsoring this video, but let's chat with Trish for a little bit and see exactly what frustration she's having with her hair. All right, Trish, well, first of all, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. What is your biggest concern with your hair right now? What are you struggling with? Well, it's always been very fine, but the last few years it's gotten really thin. You might like the style, but do you feel more like yourself with it length or do you feel more like yourself with it shorter? Is there any? Kind of a chin length. The chin length is like, you kind of feel like that's you're- That's comfortable. That's the most comfortable for you? Mm -hmm. Where did you notice it starting to go thinner? Uh, just, just like little spots kind of around the hair, the, the part. Okay. And at the temples. Well, I was gonna say the longer it gets, the more it looks just scraggly and- Just scraggly at the end. It yeah. just looks like it's not meant to be this long. Shower in the morning, you get out of the shower. What do you do from that point forward? Comb it out with a wide tooth comb. Okay. Blow dry it a little bit, okay. apply a little bit of product. I could definitely use more. So one of the things I hear behind the chair all the time is that people don't understand how to appropriately style their hair. I've heard a lot of people actually say that they don't use product until their hair is basically dry. And that's a really big problem, especially when you're trying to create volume. Now, in Trisha's specific circumstance, she's got thinner hair that's also of a fine texture. We need to pay attention to creating density at the ends, creating density in the mid shaft, and creating density at the root. And most of the time, what we find is people, when they're trying to create the illusion of more density in thin hair, they focus on really kind of the mid shaft. And that is the product that you're using, right? That is a gel, a mousse, something to create volume. What that's really doing is just creating a little bit of fluff. You're dealing with a little bit of thinness right in this area. You're noticing it around your hairline. All of the time, we have less hair in around the hairline in this area than we do back here. There is so much more hair follicles down here, right, all the way down here, than there are in this one little tiny section right around here. And that goes for somebody with thick hair. So we have to think about how do we get this to look as thick as possible? How do I get this back here to look as thick as possible? How do I get it to have more volume to look thicker and denser? And then how do I get the roots to actually not show through? The thing about getting the ends to look strong is the only way you achieve that is by actually taking the ends to where they are actually dense. If I look at this, if we comb this down, your hair starts to thin out. Like you start noticing it right about in here, but you really start seeing it as you start getting further down this line. So if we let this stuff get longer than this, it's just gonna look kind of more shattered and more shattered at the end. So it's really a matter of taking this up to where that baseline can look strong enough to make it look a little bit denser. Okay, the first thing that I noticed when I saw Trish walk through the door was she has beautiful eyes and she has incredible cheekbones and a great smile. So I've already got a lot to work with here. I feel pretty fortunate. Now it's just a matter of figuring out how short she's willing to go with her hair. How short are you willing and comfortable going? I know you mentioned before that you've had it up around your chin and that felt okay. Yeah. Is there anything about your neckline that you don't like that you're concerned about? I wouldn't want to go probably above of the hairline okay. on the neck. <laughs> Here, are you ready? I am. Do you feel confident? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. First cut's a quick one. We're gonna take off some of this length first, so. Now I know that Trish doesn't wanna go up above the neckline, and I'm not really gonna do that. I don't wanna go above the neckline, but I do wanna go pretty short around the neckline, and <laughs> I'm just hoping that it's not too short for her. Uh, I don't think it will be that. Yeah, so I'm already, already, al already, look. Look, 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 look. We bring this back off the face. This lays in. We're gonna bring this up a little bit shorter to kind of still leave it soft, right? But you can see how this shape right here, taking that bulk out of there is really drawing the eye up. And this is flat. This is flat to her head right now. Now taking it really tight in around the neckline is gonna go a long way to actually encouraging the illusion of more volume up around the crown area from the profile and lifting the eye. More importantly, it's gonna do a really good job of actually accentuating more of her jaw structure as well as even more of the cheekbone structure from the profile. Okay, one thing that I always hear people talk about, you cannot texturize thin, fine hair. Absolute, I completely completely disagree. There's a huge difference in taking hair like this and going in and texturizing it way down here to try to create volume. That's gonna make the ends look very thin, okay? That's not the kind of texturizing I'm talking about. That works on some textures, but on your texture specifically, thin fine hair, not the best move. However, going up through the ends and texturizing just these very tips, right? Just breaking those up a little bit. That is simply going to make those ends blend better and lighten them up a little bit more. It's not going to make them look overly wispy if you don't do it too much, but it's still going to take some of that 
bulk out of areas where I don't actually want to see bulk. When you start cutting hair, like you're actually molding clay, you're really thinking about the shape, then you want to take bulk out of certain areas to create illusions of more volume in other areas. And that's what texturizing shears do an incredible job on. So I want to create the illusion of more bulk up here and less bulk down here, which is going to help us accentuate cheekbone structure and all the things we've talked about. You listen. Hey, Ashley. Ashley, tell us about your place. Um, my name is Ashley. My business is Beauty by Faces. There are three secrets that I definitely want to share with Trish. The first one being using cream-based products. She has such a beautiful skin tone. If you use powder, you can bring out those fine lines and wrinkles and you know, you don't want to do that. But the second secret, contour. A lot of women get jowls. To hide that or camouflage that, all you have to do is do an upside down V right where that jowl area is and blend it out. With your cheeks as well, anything that is up and out and up here the X's. The third secret for Trish is mascara placement. It's super crucial to not put mascara on the bottom lower lashes. When you do that, it brings down your eyes and can make you look older. You mentioned that you dry your hair about 80% dry first. Mm -hmm. Why do you do that? I read that it was good for fine thin hair. So here's the thing. We need to create foundation in her hair for volume. Okay, and this goes with any thin fine hair. And the way you do that nine out of 10 times is you use a product to create that foundation. If I apply product to your hair when it's 80% dry, wherever it's dry, it's going to attach differently. Wherever it's a little bit more damp, it's going to slide through a little bit more and you're gonna get different distribution, which means that that foundational product that's creating your volume is gonna give you different volume in different areas, right? Versus an overall similar amount of volume or control. We need it all over the place. So we're gonna start with a bit more, start back here, there you go, and work it all the way through all your hair. You're shampooing your hair with that right now. You're just gonna get it, there you go. Just get it, there's nowhere on your head that that product should not be. You're gonna work it through everything. Worst case scenario, you add too much. Well, you learned what your boundaries are and you can add less next time. But adding too little, you might get the texture of a product, but not the benefit of the product. So not the volume and then think the product doesn't work. Not realize that it's just because you didn't use enough to begin with. So then I'm gonna comb through your hair real quick. Okay, and just make sure that I've got good distribution. Okay, now the next thing that I wanna use is I wanna make sure that we don't cause any more damage to your hair. So I'm gonna use a heat retainer. Now, I'm gonna use Just Frizz, obviously because it's a product that I co-developed, but any heat protectant that you're using, if you've got one that you love, use it. So on your hair, we still wanna make sure that we're trying to kind of keep this off of the scalp. So this is the one thing that we do wanna kind of apply to the mid shaft and the ends. So what I'll have you do is tilt your head off to the side. Okay, and so what you'll do is I'm gonna give this to you and I'm just gonna have you kind of spray it and try to just kind of focus it down here, mid shaft to ends. There you go, perfect, that's good on that side. Now you're gonna do the same thing on the other side, you're just gonna get it off your scalp, there you go. Now we're going to dry your hair. So we've got the heat protecting in, we've got a foundational product in. We're gonna use this dryer right here. Now this has been given to us by our good friends at SRI, this is the Dry Q. This is the dryer that we actually use when we travel. And we use it primarily because if you see it folds up like this, so now it's dry. Cool. Super cool, right? Okay. So we'll have you turn it on right here and then it's already on the heat setting. Okay. So now you're just gonna touch your head or however you normally would do it. Perfect. So you're doing it the exact way that I would tell you to do it. Just in this area where I want this to lay down, lay in, I'm just gonna turn little circles like this, okay? When I do that, don't ask me why. It's a trick that I learned probably 10, 15 years ago in the salon, but it works. It helps that hair to lay down and lay under versus like flip out or get all kicky or whatever. Now that we're almost dry, just the very front is a little bit damp. Now I'm gonna bring this back up off of your face. Okay, now the very bangs. I know that you're gonna wear your bangs like this, right? Because that's the way we cut it and that's the way you typically style it. But when you're styling them, I want you to go back and forth with them. What this is gonna do is something we call non-directional bangs. The front piece, we want that control, right? That control is created by bend. If you do this with your front, like that, when you're drying it, there's gonna be, gonna be any volume or control in those bang areas. So it's gonna be much harder to get that to stay back off of your face the way that you want it to stay. So instead of that, if we bring this back and forth, we're gonna get a little bit of volume right here, just a little bit. That'll help us get this to stay off your face. The minute I take a round brush to it, I'm always gonna be attaching one of these modifiers because the modifier needs to span the width of the brush so that I can control where that air is going. So the first things first is you're gonna put this in your hair. Now I'm gonna actually have you take this. So the way you'll do it is you already did that well. Do that what you just did again. See how you're turning that with your fingers? That is exactly how you do it. Now all you're gonna do with this hand is we're gonna put this in your brush and you're just going to try to get this to face that direction and move them both at the same time. And then back, yep, pull it a little bit. And then you're gonna go very slowly and all the way out. 
and you just use a round brush the correct way, and it's that easy. Gives it a little bit of bend. Into the, that's all we want that for, is just that little bit of softness to make it look like it's polished, right? Now that we've got it round brushed, here's another key thing that I think a lot of people get very nervous about. I want you to get kind of used to working your hands through it a little bit and kind of playing with it because we want texture and movement. If you have texture, your hair will actually look a lot denser. You see, like, we're not trying to get, I'm not trying to get your hair big. I'm trying to get your hair to have a little bit more enhanced volume. Does that make sense? Okay, so actually you killed it with the makeup. Thank you. Huge fan, but you haven't seen it yet. I'm trying to block the only mirror that we have. There's a mirror right here and I'm trying to block it so that you can't see what she has done. Are you ready to see like your final overall finished product? Sure. Are you ready? Are you? Okay, all right. We're gonna do this. We're gonna turn you right over here. And then there, there you go. That's great. Wow. You love it? That view doesn't suck. So I'm gonna show you guys first. I'm gonna show you first. Okay, I want you to look at her hair like this right now, okay? I want you to look what happens right in here when I change this one thing. Now, the last thing that I would do, we're just gonna go like this at the very nape. We're just gonna push this forward, okay? And then when we tuck this back, all this stuff comes forward. Now that this hair is going forward, it's wrapping up around the ear, comes around, and it's starting to draw more emphasis on the jawline, and it's starting to bring that eye up this way. But the second I take this back into the center, it starts to take emphasis off of the jawline and actually brings the eye down this way. It's a very minor thing again, but it's a major thing. Uh, there's one other little surprise that we have for you. Oh my gosh. Yes, from SRI, our good friends, who again, thank you for sponsoring this video. They have given you this little note that goes along with this dryer, the dryer that we use today. You're gonna take that home with you and play with it. And then a little personalized note that Super they sent sweet. just from, you, from them to you. That's awesome. Very thank cool, so huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, hey, thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for coming and joining us and Please. doing this incredible makeup. And of course, I want to say again, a big thank you to SRI for sponsoring this video. My wife and I have a plan this year to donate 10% of all of our proceeds from sponsorships like this to awesome animal charities. So it's companies like this that help us with that plan. So thank you, SRI. And a huge thank you to Trish for allowing me to do that to your hair. <laughs> I'm so glad that she liked it. If you want to learn more about the SRI Dry Cure, there is a link in the description below. Also, I will link Ash's contact info if you're around the Bend area. And if you want to be considered for one of these makeovers, we'll throw a link down there for you too, so you can come hang out with us. Probably not here, probably in my salon. But nonetheless, you can hang out with us and we'll maybe cut your hair short. Maybe not, I don't know, I don't know, maybe. For now, if you like this video, why don't you go check out this video because if you like this one, you're gonna, you're gonna love this one. So uh, I'll see you in that video.